Okay, welcome back to EMC World. This is the Cube, our flagship program without the advanced extracted signal from the noise. This is day three of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is live all day, interviews. We've already done 45 interviews. We're out talking to people, we're on the ground, asking questions, getting all the data, and extracting the signal from the noise and bringing that to you. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante here in the Cube all week. We have David Floyer joining us for our day three kickoff. Top stories here at EMC World is obviously uh, EMC's uh, messaging and story is resonating very well with the audience. We've been digging into the crowd data on our, on our side, talking to people in the hallways. And EMC's messaging around software-defined storage is really, really resonating. We're going to be continuing to dig into understanding the impact of this, the meat on the bone, as we say, a lot of sizzle, and we're going to try to understand if there's really steak on the grill here. And we're going to go in depth on this all day long. We've got a great lineup of guests today. We have all the top executives from EMC, uh, Brian Gallagher, uh, Rich Napolitano, Jeremy Burton, Paul Moritz, and a, and a slew of other great guests. We're going to hear from VCE, obviously, having great success. Um, but day three, is really all about kind of understanding the data as it starts to settle in, the architectures, the story, is it resonating, what's the impact to customers and to the ecosystem. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Dave, I want to get your take on a couple things. Let's go into the industry news first, because one, a lot of big news happening in the storage business, and we have David Floyer here as well, our, our chief analyst as well, co-founders of Wikibon here, to discuss some of the major trends happening today, a day three at EMC World. A bomb was dropped last night in the, in the marketplace, impacting the flash business, of which we talked in depth on Monday, our first day here, and uh, Dave, what's your take? With the big news is Fusion IO's CEO and chairman, David Flynn, and Jim White, the CMO, have abruptly resigned and stepped down. Uh, Dave, what's your take yeah, on so, this? So uh, uh, David Flynn, CEO and, and co-founder, Rick White, CEO, uh, CMO and co-founder, uh, are, are no longer uh, uh, respectively CEO and CMO. Uh, Shane Robeson, who was a former HP executive, uh, was running, uh, was CTO, running strategy, is now CEO. He was a board member and is now taking over as CEO. So this is a very abrupt change. Uh, nobody really knew this was coming down. The stock is down significantly. It's down about 25%. It was a little, little higher, a little down even further earlier on today. Um, so real knee-jerk reaction to news that has got people confused. People don't understand why this happened. Um, in my view, John, uh, David Flynn and Rick White had a great deal of control over the company. I, my sense is that the, the board was looking at that, saying, hey, we want to bring some more supervision to this. And, uh, and now, lo and behold, Shane Robeson is in there. Uh, Shane Robeson, as many of you know, was Leo Apotekers, one of Leo Apotekers' lieutenants, and is largely evidently responsible for, one of the people responsible for the autonomy acquisition. And so, my understanding is he's a strategy guy, and um, you know, really, the company now, in a lot of turmoil. So John, um, that's what I know. Well, I don't know what your take so, is on so this. So obviously the news has shocked everyone. We want to get down and just break down. The, the top story here in the, in the industry is that Fusion IO, public company, pioneering Flash, doing very, very well, changing the game on scale out open source and changing the economics and functionality of what Flash can do, of which they are making the moves and forcing EMC and others to have Flash. And that's what a big part of the announcement at EMC World. And the top story is that Shane Roberson, a director, is now CEO. David Flynn is out and Jim White is out. That's the top story. Rick White. Now, Rick I mean, White. Rick White um, and I did some digging this morning, Dave. I started checking around some of my sources and Shane Roberson actually wasn't Leo's guy. He was there before Leo. He was also there with Mark Hurd. He did a lot, he did a lot of um, uh, good M&A. So he's well regarded at HP. Uh, he's not the guy to blame for autonomy in my opinion. I think he was certainly involved and should have uh, pointed out some of the red flags, so he has to own that. But more importantly, he's done some good acquisitions. He had a good reputation at HP as being an executive manager, managing other execs. Not sure how much he can lead the troops at Fusion IO. We'll wait to be seen. We're going to talk to Fusion and find that out because they have really, really big opportunity and challenges in getting people to program on Flash. Obviously, David Flynn, we're pioneering that effort. So, so again, 
I'm not, we're not down on Shane Roberson, but the shock here is the abruptness of the news. And Dave, I want to, David Flory, I want to get you in here and ask you. Um, obviously, the Fusion IO news is a shock to everybody. Absolutely. Very abrupt. Obviously, some board dynamics. Stock is plummeting today. Uh, what's your take on the news? Well, it, it is a great shock. Uh, Fusion IO have been led by um, uh, David Flynn. David Flynn is a real uh, engineer at heart. He understands the flash. He understands what the company was trying to do. He's focused like a laser on the whole ecosystem, which is the software, bringing out the VSL architecture, uh, bringing out DirectFS, the uh, file system. He really has uh, brought the best software stack in the industry by far uh, out into the marketplace. For Flash? For Flash, yes, just for, for Flash on a server, to be even more precise. For Flash on a server, for Flash as an extension of memory. So he, he's going to be big shoes to fill in terms of the confidence that uh, uh, the uh, uh, Fusion IO customers had in him as a solution maker, in terms of the, of the confidence they had in the building of this uh, solution over time. I want to go to Dave Vellante, and Dave, I want to ask you specifically on the impact of the Fusion IO abrupt news of their principal players stepping down. Obviously, it was in the, in the dark of the night, obviously some board dynamics. I want to get your perspective. What does this do for the marketplace in particular? Obviously, Flash is one of the hottest things happening. We've been covering like a blanket. You guys are deep in this. There's other players. You've got Violin Memory, Virident, a slew of others, EMC's doing Flash. What does this do for the marketplace, and what should the marketplace be thinking about in evaluating and analyzing this news? Well, number one, uh, bad PR, right? This, when your stock's down this much, and that's a, that's a mini disaster. Um, number two, uh, I think that the other, the other it, it, the way this is being spun by the news media is that these guys left. You know, they're leaving, the, they're fleeing the company. Uh, yet, at the same time, they're staying on for 12 months on the board. So that's some confusion. I think Fusion IO could have done a better job of you know, transitioning this. So that's unfortunate because it brings the whole market down. You got Violin trying to do an IPO. You got other companies, you mentioned Virident who supplies EMC with uh, Extreme IO cards. Uh, uh, you know, no, numerous other guys that you know, are looking to prop up valuations and then boom, the big whale in the industry just gets nailed. So that's not good. I think it'll recover. Uh, I think we need some time to digest this, find out exactly what happened. But the key in my view, and David Floor, you and I have talked about this a lot, is Fusion IO has to get ISVs to write to its yes. software development kit. It needs database vendors and other ISVs to connect into their platform. That is the top priority. And now we're in a situation where you've got now management changes and it's going to be turmoil for a while. I, I, I agree with you. The key uh, enabler of this industry will be getting the, uh, the Oracles, the, uh, the uh, Microsofts, the uh, IBMs to write to their particular uh, set of software, uh, write to the, their APIs. If they can succeed in that, they, they have already got it out onto uh, MySQL, uh, but if they can succeed in getting that accepted and the early versions of the software running on that, that's the way that they can really break out and start to get real acceleration into the marketplace. Um, if I was uh, the uh, chief, you know, chief executives of those particular databases, I'd wait a bit. Uh, I, I'm not going to be rushing in there to, su to suggest that I should go with Fusion IO. I want to wait a bit and see if there are other alternatives. Well, so day, this is day three kickoff. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We're out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. Got a great lineup. We've got Brian Gallagher coming up next. He's here waiting on the on deck circle to come into theCUBE. But we're kind of dissecting the top news. We talked about Fusion IO. We're going to continue to monitor that. And uh, David and David Floria will be uh, uh, digging deeper. We're going to get the story. We're going to find out what's going on there. And we're going to break that down and do a continuing breaking analysis. So go to siliconangle.com and go to wikibon.org and look for the latest analysis from our team on the Fusion IO impact. Um, at day three though at EMC, we start to see the, the tea leaves start to show their colors here around what the key announcements are. Obviously the story's resonating, guys. Um, it is working, the messaging is solid, it's being well received, but is there steak on the bone? The sizzle's solid, is there steak on the bone? Software-defined storage is a key message here, and that's the top buzz. Dave Vellante, what's your take? Uh, I want to get, and then get David Floyd's kind of analysis on it. Okay, well, so EMC, uh, as we were talking, John, earlier today, they got the story right. I mean, you go into the pavilion here, customers are lining up at the software, the, the, the fine storage booth, the advanced software division's booth, to find out 
what's new, what, what, what is this, how can I get my hands on it, how can I try it? So the messaging is right on. It's all about you know, helping cloud providers you know, get more facile and even IT customers. Now, the issue is, EMC's first, they got the messaging right, but what's there? We, we saw yesterday a demo, demo you know, really is not fully baked out, uh, and clearly, you know, these guys got a lot of work to do. So, the key question that we asked John on theCUBE yesterday was, are you building this from scratch, your data management, your volume management, your storage management stack? You can't just spit out a storage stack in a, in a, in a year, or even two years, so it takes a long time. So, there's work to be done there. The other thing is, you got HP betting on OpenStack, you got, IBM's got the capability to do storage platform. What's NetApp going to do? So <clears throat> others are going to join into this fray. That's the next big battle in the industry. We're on time, we're, it's, we're pressed for time, but I want to get quickly to David Floyd's last word. Uh, David, obviously efficiency, scale, and performance are things that you look at, and obviously with this object store component, and other, among other things, what are you seeing uh, in the announcement? So I, my, my take on the uh, Viper announcement is that they've got the messaging exactly right. They've got the strategy right. Um, they need to go after the service providers and a, allow them a platform on which they can build a sets of services and they need to go after their senior, the, the, the large enterprise customers and get the two things. And I think the end game is that you're going to have mega data centers with the data center of the traditional private cloud data center of, uh, of an enterprise customer and multiple service providers in that mega data center and having a common platform that the two can communicate across is going to be a very significant long-term advantage. So I think the long-term strategy is exactly right on. And then just today, for example, listening to Rick Nic Nic uh, uh, Napolitano, N N Napolitano <laughs> <laughs> <Can't get out laughs> there. talking about the, uh, uh, his future investments in low latency stuff and his integration of the VNX stack together with Viper and being able to have a virtual machine out there in the marketplace, for example, on a, a cloud provider. Those are very exciting Well, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna hear from Brian Gallagher up next, and you know, we like to use sports analogies, so in football, you the running backs go north, south, or east and west. We want to hear what he has to say, but quick final word, you got the four horsemen, as Dave pointed out, HP, EMC, IBM, and NetApp, the big players. What does software-defined storage mean for all those guys? Real quick, final word. So, uh, what it means is it, it, establishing the future plan Platform. There won't be many platforms available to, to, uh, that will succeed. At one, two, maximum three. EMC at the moment is in a, an open stack of the two that have got it and HP is behind I'm going to throw Amazon stack. in the mix there too. And Amazon in the mix as well. Those well, well kind of on the fringe, kind of poking in. Okay, this is theCUBE, our flagship. That's our kickoff for day three, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, exclusive coverage here on siliconangle.com. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with Brian Gallagher right after the short break. <laughs>